welcome to this uh, second video on PST migrations with Enterprise Vault. In this demonstration we're going to take a look at the client driven PST migration method. Okay, so generally the first thing you want to do is check the PST migration policy. Um, where do you want to search for the PSTs? What do you want to do with particular message types, etc. I just want to give you a very quick overview of some of the policy settings. Obviously there's a, a lot more content in the white paper, but um, just relevant for this demonstration. Uh, the first thing you need to decide is the retention category for this particular group of users, the VIPs. What would the migration priority be? Well, critical because they are VIPs, so we want them to migrate their PST files first. So for various different groups, you can have different migration priorities. Also new in EV1004 is the client-driven PST migration with PST submission. So end users are able to choose which PSTs they want to migrate. They're able to overwrite the retention category as well. I can choose to search a particular path. In this case, I know my end users store their files in C local PST, but I can choose to search the entire computer to save time. If I can also choose to exclude certain folders, for example, C colon slash windows, uh, any of those folders that uh, is very unlikely to include a PST file. Okay, um, after the migration, what do you want to do with the PST file? Definitely delete it. Notifications, yes, I want to let the end user know that they've been enabled for migration, that they're able to submit their own PST files, and that the response is required at a particular stage for the migration. And obviously I also want to let them know when their PST file has been migrated successfully. These messages, um, you're able to edit them, customize them as much as you want. Shortcut creation. So when you import the PST, you can choose to create shortcuts to the items within the user's mailbox. Even though those shortcuts are very small, a lot of them will still take up 10 or 20 megabytes in size. So you may choose to uh, not create uh, shortcuts and just let the end user view it through Virtual Vault or Archive Explorer or Search. The shortcuts that you're going to import, if you choose to do them, you can limit them. So maybe only include a, uh, limit the size of them, maybe only include the first 50 or 100 characters and you can also choose to only import certain message types. Okay, so that's the administrator interface. Let's take a look at the end user. So I've got Outlook 2013 open here. Uh, on the left hand side I've got the user's mailbox. I have their PST file and I also have their virtual vault. So the virtual vault is an interface that shows uh, all the folders within um, the user's archive. Uh, it handles and it looks and it feels just like a PST file, but it's just a, a local copy of what is in the end user's archive. So the first thing that I want to do is um, submit a PST for migration. Um, in this particular end user's case, I've uh, already sent them an email uh, to say that um, there's a PST ready to migrate. And you can include some screenshot instructions depending on how involved you want them to be in the migration. As you can see at the top, uh, if I click on Enterprise Vault, I have the option for PST migration. So this window will tell me the status of um, PSTs particular to this user that's been migrated. And I can see all of those as completed successfully. And there's also some action required. One PST was located by Enterprise Vault and it's awaiting your action. So if I look at that PST file, I can see, yeah, it's found the one in the folder where I expected it. Um, I can choose to let the end user be involved and choose what retention category they want to migrate it into, or I can select one for them. And I then choose to migrate that PST file. You can now see it's queued up. And at this point, the end user can continue to work Optionally, I can also allow the end user to manually add a PST file that's not necessarily attached to their Outlook profile. So end users can browse wherever they've stored a PST file, they can add them in. Choose the retention category and submit it to be migrated. 
So it's not a very, very big PST file, we'll just wait for that one to finish. The end user will be notified with uh, an email message. If I go back in, I can see that the status has now changed, so it's migrating. Okay, I've just received an email. The PST file has been migrated. So that can give instructions such as that your um, PST file is no longer visible in Outlook, so it's automatically disconnected that PST file. For this particular user, I chose to import the PSD with the option to create shortcuts in the user's mailbox. So exactly the same as they had before, the end user is used to seeing the items within their mailbox and it's just imported it under that particular heading. I could have chosen to just import the PST by using its original name, which in most cases is personal folders, so that the end user then knows what to look for in Outlook. Um, and if I go look at the status, you'll notice that Mike Smith PST has been migrated successfully. So that's a brief overview of the client-driven migration. That concludes this video presentation. In the next video, we're going to take a look at server-driven PST migrations. Thank <laughs> you.